Taking its name from the Italian for free, a libero is a spare defender who sits behind the defensive line and sweeps up behind. This is why in English the role is referred to as a sweeper, although there is variation between how players interpreted the role, with some primarily a last line of defence and others using their freedom to progress the ball and step into midfield. But there's no real difference between a libero and a sweeper, it's just a difference in the language. The origins of the role are found in two systems, the linked defensive strategies of Karl Rapanz Vero and the Catanaccio of Nerero Rocco and Helenio Herrera, and an adaptation of the WM. Rapanz Vero, or Bolt, was developed with the Swiss club Servet in the 1930s, and then used when Rapan coached the Swiss national side. As Jonathan Wilson writes in Inverting the Pyramid, the two wing halves moved back to flank the fullbacks, meaning there was a sort of four man defence, but with one fullback covering deeper. This player would then be a free man, but Rapan's teams dropped off and ceded space and also used the centre half to prompt attacks, so this was definitely a defensive move. Wilson also notes that a similar change occurred in Russia, with Krylia Sovyetov Kuybyshev, a Soviet Air Force backed side, dropping a halfback into the defensive line to sweep up behind the two fullbacks, who man marked. Under coach Alexander Kuzmich Abramov, Krylia punched above their weight, and there was always a sense in the early days of sweepers that this was a system for weaker sides who needed solidity and counter-attacking to achieve success. These changes were relatively localised though, until Catanaccio became successful with big Italian teams. Now, some of those Italian sides had used spare defenders before, notably Giuseppe Viani Salanitana and Ottavio Barbieri's Genoa. These were adaptations of the WM. Like Abramov's Krelia, these sides dropped a halfback to assist the defensive line, allowing a fullback to sweep behind. Nerero Rocco, who made his reputation at Triestina, developed Ivano Blasson into the first celebrated libero an uncompromising defender whose long clearances would begin counter-attacks. Rocco went on to success at AC Milan using the system, but Inter Milan are the club most associated with Catanaccio. Under Herrera, with Armando Picci as the libero, Inter dominated Italian and European football, with Giacinta Facchetti as an attacking left-back and playmaking deep midfielder Luis Suarez. Picci and his fellow defenders kept everything tight at the back, ensuring that Inter could man-mark opposition forwards with Pichi spare to mop up anything that came through, and then pass the ball back to Suarez, who could free Fichetti on the left or Jaya on the right. Now, All these formations have in common the idea of a sweeper playing behind two defenders, usually the full-backs of the 2-3-5, and the evolution to a back three, especially when playing against what was then the predominant formation 4-4-2, kept the sweeper as a key role. With two defenders who could man-mark the two opposition forwards, the spare man was able to sweep or take a proactive role moving the ball forwards. This was done by passing, often long and wide to the advancing wingbacks or by carrying the ball vertically. Sepp Piontek's Denmark used a 3-5-2 at the 1986 World Cup, which saw Morten Olsen used as a sweeper with a defensive midfielder dropping back to help the two man-marking defenders if necessary. This allowed Denmark's security at the back, with Olsen able to carry the ball forwards and play it long to Preban Elkjar or Michael Ladrup, but with the security of Jens Jon Bertelsen dropping off. And Germany, coached by Franz Beckenbauer, one of the greatest ever liberos while playing at Bayern Munich, used a similar system, but narrower and less attacking, with West Germany in 1986 and then later in 1990, when he won the trophy as a manager to go with his victory as a player in 1974. As a player, Beckenbauer's Bayern had used a sort of 4-3-3. In this formation, and with Rinus Michel's Ajax and Ernst Happel's Feyenoord, one of the two central defenders was in essence a sweeper, even in a back four. This meant that Beckenbauer, or Ajax's Valiba Vesovic, or Barry Hulshelf, for example, would step out of the back line to bolster the midfield in transition. In fact, Beckenbauer often played as a midfielder for West Germany. The Ajax and Netherlands total football formation was even written as a 1-3-3-3, with a notionally narrow back line, although the wide defenders were part of the constant switching on the flanks, with the sweeper making a 3-4-3 when the side pushed forwards. And, despite the increased use of pressing and zonal marking, the libero still has a function in modern football, 
Sometimes, this is with a back three. David Luiz's role under Antonio Conte in Chelsea's title-winning side could be described as a libero. He could bring the ball out, dribbling it to break the first line of the press, or launching long passes to the wing-backs. And many sides now use one defender in the back four as a more progressive passing option, with David Alaba at Bayern a superb contemporary example. He's able to bring the ball out and enter the midfield area, especially as Bayern push high and Yuzua Kimmich is able to drop back to ensure defensive solidity. Many teams who use a back three now, Bayer Leverkusen, Atalanta, Sheffield United as three examples, tend to use the outer centre-backs to create numerical superiority in wide areas rather than use the central centre-back to do it through the middle of the pitch. The central defender of the three does therefore perform a sweeping function, although goalkeepers also have that task now. But the more attacking element of the libero role is given to the outer centre-backs. It's a division of the libero role between two sets of players, but it's still hugely important in the modern game.